Hello guys, welcome to our new module and today's module I'll be discussing chapter 19, Injury, Poisoning and Certain Other Consequences of Your External Causes. That is your category S00 to your T88. This is a quite long guideline so please bear with me and um, let me know if you have any questions with this chapter because this is too long. I mean it's quite long guideline and then uh, these are there are guidelines that are quite confusing. So don't forget to ask your questions if you have any questions. Okay, your chapter 19. Um, let's start with the first guideline. So I have an example here. Okay, before moving on to the specific guidelines. So while playing tennis in a tournament at the Clay Court Country Club, a male player sprained his wrist, right wrist rather, and was treated in a hospital emergency department close to the courts. Okay. Now, in your chapter 19, we're talking about injuries, poisoning, and other certain other consequences of your external causes. So in here, we are talking about injuries, like for example, it's your traumatic or your accident, accident injuries, okay? So we have here, so what is the problem here? The patient suffered a sprain in his right wrist. Okay, so your code should be a sprain in his right wrist, correct? So that's the problem. And the code for that is S63.501A. That is unspecified sprain of the right wrist and this is initial encounter. In your chapter 19, it is very important to have your, uh, to determine the uh, seven characters, which is your initial, subsequent and your sequela and there are additional seven characters in your chapter 19 okay so um this is your code for chapter 19 what is what is the condition or what happened to the patient okay what trauma happened to the patient so that is your uh sprain now we should need i mean we should code also the code for the external causes which will be going to discuss in your chapter 20 the external causes so i just give you the whole code of this i mean the whole complete code set for this uh condition for the scenario so we also need to code in the activity and the activity is playing a racket and hand sports where is your um um tennis okay and you should also code the place of occurrence where does the incident or the accident happen okay and you also need to yeah so that's it you need to code for the um chapter 19 which is the injury or the traumatic injury happened to the patient and the second and the third code is the external causes code and that should be coded um that we will going to discuss that in your chapter 20. So your chapter 19 and chapter 20 goes hand in hand. Okay, chapter 19 and chapter 20 goes hand in hand because your chapter 20, your chapter 19 will tell you all the conditions or traumatic injuries, poisoning or any accidents happen to the patient while chapter 20 will explain how or where or why the patient suffered an injury. Okay, so let's start with the guidelines. Since we're talking about the seventh character, we have initial encounter, which is your A, V for your subsequent encounter, and your S is sequela. So we've been discussing this one since the first chapter up to your chapter 19. Okay, I further discuss these seven characters in your chapter 13 when we discuss about the recurrent or chronic bone condition already. Okay. So here's the guideline for coding of injuries, okay? Coding of injuries. So we'll no longer, I mean, you know, I'll no, I'll no longer go in depth about your seven character A, D, and S because you already have your idea about those seven characters. So, okay, so let's start with the guideline. Um, the first guideline there is your letter B. I mean, the second guideline other because we're done with letter A, which is your um, initial encounter, I mean, seven character A, V, and S. Now, let's move on to your coding of injuries, okay? Now, when you are coding injuries, this is a very common mistake of my students, okay? So, please be careful. Put a star in your, in your letter B, okay? Put a star in your letter B because they usually ask these questions in the actual exam. Okay, coding of injuries, okay? When coding injuries... Okay, highlighted one, assign separate code for each injury. 
unless a combination code is provided, in which case the combination code is assigned. And do not use the unspecified multiple injuries because that is very vague. No, no, you are using unspecified and you're also mentioning the word multiple, okay? Remember our goal for ICD 10 CM is you should always code it to the highest level of specificity and we should be very specific as much as possible. Okay? So you are not allowed to use your T07. Okay? So here's the common question. Okay? Since we're talking about coding of injuries, these are the common questions that came up in the exam. Superficial injuries. Put a heart or put a star there. Superficial injuries, abrasions, or contusions are not coded when associated with more severe injuries of the same site. Okay, like for example, the patient suffered a fracture in his hand or in his forearm. Okay, to be specific, the patient suffered a fracture in the forearm and the patient also may have abrasions because it cannot be, you know, most of the time there is an abrasion plus fracture. Now, if we are talking about the same site, we only need to code the more severe, which is the fracture. And we, are no longer to, uh, we will no longer code for the abrasions. Okay, because we have a separate code for abrasions. Okay, but it doesn't mean, like, we're talking about the same site here. If there's also an abrasion on the other side and there's no fracture on that side, you can code abrasion. There's no problem with that. Uh, this guideline with superficial injuries is, we're talking about like, if there is a more severe injury happened to that the same side, you will only code the severe one and you no longer code the superficial injuries, which is your abrasion most of the time. I hope that is clear. If we are talking about the same site, now the problem in the scenario, most of the time that they will give it, they will not specify the specific, uh, you know, anatomy. It's up for you to determine what's the anatomical location that they're talking about. Okay? So be very careful with that. Okay, next guideline, primary injury with damage to the nerve and blood vessels. Guys, when you're talking about primary injury and there's a damage to the nerve, uh, nerves and blood vessels, we also have a code to the damage to the nerve, which is SC4, and your blood vessels is your S15. You should always code the primary injury first because there's no damage to the nerve and there's no damage to the blood vessels if there's no injury at all. Okay, so you always need to code first the primary injury. Okay? Next, coding of traumatic fractures. This is a very important guideline in your chapter 19. Okay, so when you are coding um, traumatic fractures, remember we discussed about pathologic fracture in your chapter 13. Here are the principles that you need to know. The principles of principles of co multiple coding of injuries should be followed in coding fractures. Okay. Please highlight this guideline. This is a very important guideline that you should need to follow. Okay. Because, okay, um, especially when you're doing your actual work, and even in the exam, they will definitely ask questions about this. Fractures of a specified site are coded individually by site. Please highlight that one. It should be coded per site you we need to be very specific with the site because we are talking about fracture and then here's the guideline here's our default okay a fracture not indicated as open or closed should always be coded as closed we are talking about fracture now how will you identify an open fracture and a closed fracture Open fracture meaning there is a break in the skin. That's open fracture. Closed fracture is there's no break in the skin. Now, if there's no documentation at all in the medical record that if it's an open or closed, your default should always be closed. Because your close in your chapter 19, when we are talking about traumatic factor fractures, the first thing that you need to consider is, of course, the site, the anatomical site. Now, the second option that you need to know because codes are being divided is, are we talking about close or open fracture? Now, how would you know that if there's no documentation at all, if it's an open or close? So, as per your guideline, 
if it's not indicated, your default should always be closed. Okay, another note. Okay, a fracture not indicated whether displaced or not displaced should be coded to displaced. Because remember, when we are talking of fracture, there are, there are, there's a high tendency that there should be a misalignment of the bone already because there's a fracture, correct? So if it's not documented, if it's displaced or non-displaced, your code, I mean your default, should always be displaced because the other options that you will going to choose is, is it displaced or not displaced? Okay, that's the very important guideline. Next Let's move on to your another uh, principle of your coding traumatic fractures. When you are coding up and uh, coding traumatic fractures, please highlight this one for open fractures. I don't know if there's in the guideline. Um, actually, when you go to your S82, S82 code, there is um, an instructional note about this. Okay. Now, before moving on to that, okay, let's start with your gas, I mean, open fractures. Please highlight open fracture. Now, you have your table there. I mean, you have your diagram in your uh, book, in your uh, guideline, if you're using an AAPC, ICD, 10 cm book. You have a diagram there. Um, is the fracture open or closed? That's the first um, box there. Is the fracture open or closed? Okay, now I already defined to you what is open and closed, correct? Now, if it's closed, go ahead and you have your options there. Like active treatment for A, subsequent routine healing for D, delayed healing for G, subsequent non-union for K, subsequent malunion for P, and you have your sequela. Those are the same seven character when we discuss your chapter 13, correct? Those are your additional um, additional seven characters that we have now he, there's also an additional seven character when we are talking about open fracture and please put a note there because you can see open there correct when you can see open there put a note there that is for gas classification okay for gas classification okay when we are talking about open fracture, we have to use the Gastilo classification. Your Gastilo classification is only for open fracture. And this Gastilo classification is the one that we are using to categorize what should be our type. I mean, what is the category of your open fracture? Is it type 1, type 2, or type 3? open fracture so how would you know if it's type 1 type 2 and type 3 that is the help of our gas low classification again you can see in that in your category s82 now since it's already available in your diagram you can see this okay um open fracture okay open fracture what is the fracture classification so we have this one we have two um column here let's start with the first one fracture one fracture type one two or nos active treatment is b subsequent routine healing is e subsequent delayed healing is h subsequent non-union is m subsequent malunion is q and sequela for the s for category fracture type 3a 3B or 3C, active treatment is C, subsequent routine healing is F, subsequent delayed healing is J, subsequent non-union is N, subsequent malunion is R, and subsequent uh, sequela is your letter S. So that is your gastilo class. I mean, those are the additional seven character. So, um, for you to categorize them properly, you need to use your Gastilo classification first to determine what type of open fracture. The type of open fracture is being divided depending on how deep the fracture is. Okay, is it the is it the skin only is being involved or it involves the muscle already? Okay, so I have here the Gastilo classification. Um, I think just put a highlight in your active in your letter B. Okay, seven character B because they quite they are quite confused with this. Like it's because it is right after.
after the character A. Okay, seven. Because most of the time when we say seven character A, it's initial, correct? And anything after letter A, we, con we usually consider is um, uh, as a subsequent already. Okay? No. For your uh, seven character, for your gusty lock love situation for open fracture, your B is also your um, active open fracture initial. Okay, when you check your seven character B, that is your seven character initial encounter. B for open fracture. Okay, same with your letter C. That's I think you need to put in there, um, can you see the active treatment? Remember if it's active treatment, it's initial. Correct? It's the same as letter A. So put in a note there in your um, diagram, um, in active treatment letter B and your active treatment letter C, those are initial encounter. Same as your letter A there in your closed fracture, which is your active treatment. Okay, so when we are talking about initial fracture, initial uh, seven character for, for fracture, we need to know if it's open or closed. Because if it's open, your seven character should either be B or C. But for initial encounter, but for close fracture, your initial encounter should be A. Okay, don't be confused of that. A lot of students have uh, usually having a mistake on this. Like if they uh, saw a 7 character B, and like for example, it's an initial encounter, they usually eliminate that. But keep in mind that 7 character B and 7 character C is also an initial encounter. Same with your letter A. The difference is of course closed and open fracture, and it depends on the type based on the Gastelo classification so here's the ghastly law classification guys it's very important to put a note also in your book since there's a space on the diagram when we say type 1 it's less than 1 cm length which is a skin wound type 2 is laceration okay more than 1 cm in length without extensive soft tissue damage flap or avulsions type 3 more than 10 cm with extensive soft tissue injury or a traumatic amputation. Type 3A, adequate soft tissue coverage. Type 3B, significant soft tissue loss with exposed bone that requires soft tissue transfer to achieve coverage. 3C, associated vascular injury that requires repair of the limb preservation. So this is your gastelo classification for your open fracture. Again, just to summarize, when we are coding multi- uh, Coding traumatic fractures, the very important thing that you need to note is, of course, your anatomy or the site. Next is, you need to know if is it closed or open fracture. And everything should follow. And the last one, you need to know if it's displaced or non-displaced. Okay? That's it. Um, here's it. It's the same thing, initial versus subsequent. So your A... B and C is your initial. And anything after your uh, A, B, and C is considered as your subsequent. And you also have your sequela. Okay? So a patient underwent surgery for an open burst fracture of the first lumbar vertebra, which became unstable. So what is the anatomical location? That is your first lumbar vertebra. Is it open or closed fracture? Specifically stated that it's an open fracture. Is it initial or subsequent? If um, there's no documentation, if it's an initial or subsequent, keep in mind, your default should always be initial encounter. So our code is S32.012B. It is an initial encounter for open fracture. Okay, I keep on reminding you that, guys, that letter B and letter C is also an initial encounter in your open fracture. Okay? That's it. Uh, seven character for subsequent care. You have your um, completed active treatment already. It's already the healing phase. So the common example is cast change or removal. Removal of external or internal fixation device. Medication adjustment and follow-up visits. So these are the additional seven character for Nani Union. K, M, and N. The subsequent encounter, subsequent care for Mal Union. 
is your PQNR. We also have aftercare Z codes if the condition is no longer present or the fracture is already healed. Okay, now the guideline encoding multiple fractures. What if there's a multiple fractures? Code first the highest according to severity. Now, how would you know if um, what is, I mean, what fractures being had, I mean, the high, having the highest severity, you should always um, code it depending on the type of the fracture. Like if it's like uh, multiple fractures or, or this, there's, you know, um, a complicated fractures like that, or it depends on the anatomical location. If the fracture and then the vertebra or on the neck, remember, versus the finger, of course, you need to code first the fracture of the neck, okay, which is the highest severity one. Okay, that is your coding for multiple or coding for traumatic fractures. Okay, let's move on to your burns and corrosion. Okay, again, they love also to ask questions about burns and corrosion because this will really take your time in the exam. Okay, they love to do this. Like, uh, you know, in the exam, they are, there are questions like you can answer it within 30 seconds or even 10 seconds, you can answer it. But there are also questions that you need to spend 10 minutes for you to answer that one question. Okay? So you need to maximize or balance your time in answering. Okay? So coding of burns and corrosions, ICD-10CM makes a distinction between burns and corrosions. Okay? Burn codes, th these are thermal burns that come from a heat source. Burns resulting from electricity and radiation. And while in, when you're talking about corrosions, these are your burns due to your chemicals, okay? Like your uh, muriatic acid, like that, okay? Um, here's the guideline, okay? Um, in my slide, they skip your number one guideline, but I'll need to go through with your number one guideline, okay? Before moving on. Sequencing of burn and related condition codes. Okay, so I need to go through um, letter D, coding of burns and corrosions, number one. Sequencing of the burn and related condition code. Okay, sequence first the code that reflects the highest degree. So here's the sequencing when we're talking about multiple words. Okay, letter A, uh, the guideline number one. Sequence first the code that reflects the highest degree of burn when more than one burn is present. So remember, what are the degrees of burn? Remember, your first degree, second degree, and third degree burn. So when we are talking about multiple burns, sequence first the highest severity, which is your third degree ver burns, followed by your second degree burn, and followed by your first degree burn. Okay, now that letter A, when the reason for the admission or encounter is for the treatment of the external multiple burns, sequence first the code that reflects the burn of the highest degree. Same thing. Letter B, when a person has both internal and external burns, the circumstances of admission come govern the selection of the principal diagnosis and first listed diagnosis. Okay, letter C, when a patient is um, admitted for a burn injuries and other related conditions such as smoke inhalation or respiratory failure, and then the circumstances of encounter should always be our principal diagnosis. Okay, so now since we're talking about local site and we're talking about degrees, so remember what is our degrees of burn? You have your, um, you have your first degree, second degree, and third degree burns. Now, what is also the same local site or what we call here in the in the book is also known as your anatomic site okay when we are talking about anatomic site or local site that is our based on our rule of nine okay i hope you remember the rule of nine because but you can see that when you go to your category t31 okay go to your category t31 and you can see there the rule of nine photo now, before moving on, okay, remember the rule of nine, nine, four, okay? So it's being, the, the body's being divided based on anatomical location or what we call the local site or the anatomic site. Okay, now here's the guideline letter B. Classify burn of the same anatomic site and on the same side, but of different degrees 
The subcategory identifying the highest degree recorded in the diagnosis, like for example, there's a second and third degree burn of the right thigh, assign only the third degree. So for this one, if we are talking about like, for example, there's a burn on the chest, okay? And on the chest, there is a second degree, there's also a third degree burn. Because that could happen, like a patient may suffer the first de a second degree burn and may also suffer the third degree burn and we are talking about the same site. Now in the guideline, if we are talking about the same site but with different degrees, code only the highest degree. This is when we are only talking about the same anatomical site or the same local site. Okay, that's it. Now let's move on to your example. A patient has both second and third degree burns on the upper back. Are we talking about the same anatomical site? Yes, it is. Now since we are talking about the same anatomical site, your uh, coding should be based on the one code for the anatomical site and you should only code the highest degree in that the same side so for this one you should only code the third degree burn keep in mind that the fourth character of your burn code will i always identify as the degree of burn so remember we have first degree that should be 0.1 second degree should be 0.2 third degree should be 0.3 and that is your fourth character okay keep in mind because that is very important later on when we are talking about uh multiple birds now what if this is one when we are talking about the same site only correct you only need to code to the highest now put a note there what if it's a multiple sites okay put a note there in your number two for multiple burn sites or multiple anatomical site or multiple burn in a different anatomical site your guideline is put a note multiple burn sites your general guideline is code them all code first all the highest degree okay for multiple burn sites code them all code first the highest degree okay so what if there are three parts with third degree you know you can code Code all of those three first before coding the second degree burn. Okay? It doesn't matter who you're going to code on those three, but make sure that all those three third degree burns should always be the first code before coding on for your secondary and before move I mean before moving on to the second degree and coding for the first degree burn. Alright? So I think that's nothing um that is not indicated in the guideline in the book. So that's a very important thing that you need to know okay next oh uh, we have non-healing burns when we say non-healing burns it should always be coded as your acute burn and that is also your necrosis of the burning skin if there's an infected burn you should code that for an additional code for infection or you need to code for an additional organism if it's present already because we're talking about infection assign separate codes for each burn site okay each separate code for burn side okay now when we are talking about burns and corrosions we also need to code for the extent of body surface area involved when we say uh, extent of body surface area involved that is also known as your tbsa total body surface uh, area okay put a note in your guideline there in your guideline number six when we are talking about extent of body surface area involved this is only for third degree burns put a note there your burns and corrosion classified according to the extent of body surface area involved you only need to use t31 and t32 for those third degree burns we are only coding for tbsa of the third degree burns you don't need to code tbsa for the second the third second degree and first degree burns you only need to use co uh, you only need to code for TBSA if there's a third degree burn. And if there's a multiple third degree burns burns, 
you only you need to add all those um, TBSA of all third degree burns. That's a guideline. I hope I'm very clear with that. Your TBSA should only be applied in your third degree burns. If there's no third degree burn in the scenario, you don't need to code for your TBSA. Your TBSA is your T31 for burn, T32 for your corrosion. Again, you can see the rule of 9 there. Now, you can see the anatomical location in your rule of 9. You can also see the percent. And those percent are also known as your total body surface area or also known as your TBSA. Okay? So I have an example here. Okay, keep in mind. Alright, so put a note. A fireman suffered a third degree burn of his upper back. Okay, so put a note. Okay, make a note there. Um, upper, uh, put in a third degree burn and then dash upper back. Put a note. Third degree burn and then upper back. Okay, and put in the 8%. Another dash with 8%. Body surface area. Second degree burn of the neck, okay, neck, second degree burn, and then 2%. And third degree burn of the right forearm involving 4%. So third degree burn, right forearm, okay, and then um, 4%, okay. Um, body surface area battling a house fire. He was in the house containing the fire when the burn occurred. Burns occurred. He was taken to the hospital emergency department for treatment. Now, what is my guideline of go? There are multiple sites of burn. Now, when we are coding multiple sites of burns, code them all. Code first the highest degree. So for this one, we all we need to code for, okay, uh, third degree burn first, and we have the third degree of the upper back first. Correct. Third degree at the upper back first. Next, we also need to code for the... Do we need to code uh, uh, right away the second degree? No, because there's also another third degree, which is your third degree of the right forearm. Correct? Okay, again, the fourth character will identify the degree. I mean, yes, if it's third degree, second degree, or first degree. And now, that's the time we're going to code for the second degree. Now, the question is, do we need to code for TBSA or not? Because, uh, yeah, do we need to code TBSA, your T31? Yes, because there's a third degree. Now, do we need to code like 8 plus 2 plus 4 or 8 plus 4 only? Because for second degree, the percent is 2, 2% total TBSA. For your upper box, 8%. And your... um. Right for arm is 4%. Do we need to add the 2? Okay, no. We no, don't need to capture the, the percentage of 2, uh, the 2% two per, two, two TBSA for the neck because remember, TBSA should only be for third degree burn. So, okay. So, as you can see, 8 plus 4 is 12. It is uh, your 10 to 19%. As you can see, the definition of your T31.11, um, uh, burns involving 10 to 19% of the body surface area with 10 to 19% third degree burns. Okay? Now, remember, for your chapter 19, we also need to code for your external causes, which is your cause is exposure to flame, place in the house, okay? So that is your complete code sets. Okay, ICD-10 CM codes. Okay, let's move on to your another example. Okay, take time to read the scenario. Okay, a three-year-old is brought to, the, uh, brought to the burn unit affecting pulling a pot, hot soup off the stove and spilling it on herself. He sustained 8% second degree burns. When you are coding burn, guys, you need to write the anatomy, the degree, plus the percent. That should be your format most of the time. You need to uh, put in the anatomy, um, the degree of burn, plus the percentage for TBSA. For this one, you need to code for the legs, 18 per uh, legs, second degree, 18%. Next, 20% uh, 
uh, we have chest and our chest. Okay, 20%, a uh, third degree, 20%, arms, third degree, 20%. Okay, all right. And then the total body surface, oh, all right, so it's being indicated here what is the total body surface area already. Okay, that is your uh, 38%. But, okay, we're talking about the, the, the second degree only, and the, the, the TBSA should only be the third degree burn. Okay, now let's go directly to the choices. Is there a third degree burn? Yes, there is. Eliminate letter A. Why? Because remember, point to is second degree, and remember when we're talking about multiple burns, code all those third degree burns first followed by second degree. So eliminate letter A. And your again, your T2131, okay? Your um, burn should always be a seventh character code. Eliminate letter B. Now your options, letter C and letter D. Okay, that's correct. Letter C and letter D. Okay. Uh, how many third degree burns that we have? Okay, so what should be your answer? Letter C or letter D? Okay. The difference is only the second code. Okay. And the third code. TBSA, that's fine because it's the same. And even the first code, the same. Okay. Most students answered letter D. Because we also have a second degree. But keep in mind... Um, are, when we are talking about chest and arms, are they on the same anatomical location or anatomic site in your rule of nine? No. We have a separate site for chest, which is also known as your trunks. Trunks, okay, in your, your rule of nine. We also have a separate for the arms, correct? And they are both third degree, meaning you need to have a code, two codes for third degree. So you need to have point three and point three there, correct? So that should be letter C, not letter D. Am I correct? And the second degree for the legs is your T24.299A. Three, three, so the answer here is your letter C, okay? For those who answered letter D, that's fine, but keep in mind, to always be mindful of your rule of nine. Okay, again, you can see that in your T31 book. And in, in, in the subcategory, I mean the category T31. Okay? Uh, encounter for treatment of late effects of burn again, your seven character S. And sequela off with late effect of burn and current burn. Uh, if there is a current and sequela, you code first for the current followed by the sequela. Again, the common example for the late effect of burn is of obviously your S-scar. Okay? Those, or for example, the other one is, what do you call this one? Um, scar. Yeah, scar. That's the common. Um, I still have another one, but I can't think it of, about it. Okay, but it, the, those are the common uh, sequela of your burn. Okay. Next, use of an external coast code with burden and corrosion. So you need to identify the source or the cause. And the intent. Is it intentional or not? And where does burn happen? Is it in the house, in the hotel, in the classroom like that, or in the park, or in the, you know, the place of service, okay? Or place where it is occurred, rather, okay? Place of occurrence, to be exact, okay? Now, let's move on to the last part of your chapter 19, I think, when we are talking about, yeah, uh, this is the uh, uh, adverse effect, poisoning, underdosing, and toxic effects. Remember, uh, I already discussed this one when I discussed the table of chemical drugs and chemicals, but um, I already gave you an overview. But in, in your ICD-10 book, in your AEPC ICD-10 book, they gave you us a very, very good diagram they are in your table 1C, 19E5. Your adverse effect, poisoning, underdosing, and toxic effects table. That's a summary of all the guidelines. Okay? But let's go through the guidelines before moving on to that box or the table. Okay? 
T365 is your code for adverse effects, poisoning, underdosing, and toxic effects. So combination codes that includes the substance. When we are coding about adverse effect, poisoning, underdosing, and toxic effects, we are talking about the combination code of the adverse effect, poisoning, toxic effect, and underdosing as well as the intent. Okay, here are a few reminders when you are coding your adverse effect, poisoning, underdosing, and toxic effects. Do not code directly from the table of drugs. Why? Because sometimes the code that is given in the table of drugs is not yet complete. If there's a check sign or that there's a dash, you still need to verify on the tabular list to confirm if there are an additional character or not. Vice versa. Because it's also vice versa. In the exam, they will give you choices already. Okay? Do not go directly to the choices. Please. Okay, um, yes, they will give you options like letter A, letter B, letter C, and letter D. And the tendency is the, the student may go directly and check the meaning of the codes. Okay, special guideline. When we are talking about table of drugs, if you encounter questions about adverse effect, poisoning, underdosing, and toxic effects in the exam, please use your table. That's very important. Please use your table first. Okay, be rather than going directly to the choices because there are questions i mean there are choices like uh, oh i think this is the correct answer but when you check on the table of drug that's not the correct one okay use as many code as necessary code each individually unless combination code exists okay i already defined what is adverse effect so now let's go to the table when we discuss about adverse effect okay your adverse effect is assigned appropriate cause or nature of adverse effect when a drug has been correctly prescribed and properly administered. When you go to the table, adverse effect meaning drug has been correctly prescribed and properly administered. So what you'd be what should be your code? Your first code should be uh, nature of the adverse effect, tachycardia, or delirium, or the manifestation first, followed by the adverse effect code, which is usually the seventh character uh, or the sixth character is usually five. Remember your one, two, three, four, five, six in the table of drugs? One, two, three, four, we're talking about poisoning. Five, we're talking about adverse effect. Six, we're talking about seven character. I mean, uh, underdosing. Okay? That's how you identify your adverse effect. So I have an example here. A patient took a dose of penicillin that was prescribed correctly, resulting in projectile vomiting. So this is an adverse effect because it's prescribed correctly. So you need to code first projectile vomiting followed by the adverse effect of your penicillin. Okay, next, what is the code for it is reported for an adverse effect of iodine? This is the question that I usually, um, that's, this is what I'm talking about a while ago. Can you go ahead and direct? Can you go ahead and check for? Um, you know this is an adverse effect, correct? So remember the seventh, the sixth character is five. Eliminate letter A. Eliminate letter. Yeah, eliminate letter A only. Now can you go directly and check the tabular list? T T four nine zero X five A. T fifty zero eight zero eight X five A and T fifty point nine nine five A. Check those codes. And let me know, uh, pause, pause first, and let me know what should be your answer, based on you when you go to the tabular list. When you see tabular list, go directly to the code T forty nine, T fifty, and T fifty point nine nine Okay, I think you will be left with letter B and letter C. So what should be your answer? I think most of the time it's letter C or le or I don't know letter B. Okay. right so what's your answer so it's either b or c but the correct answer is letter b most of the student answered letter c but when you go to the table of drugs go ahead and check iodine table of drugs i'm talking about table of drugs in the alphabetic index go to your table of drugs and chemicals Look for iodine and look for adver adverse effect and you will be directed, directed to your T49. 
this is what I'm talking about. Do not go directly to the code. For, for drugs and chemicals, please use your table of drugs and chemicals. Okay? That's it. Poisoning. Your poisoning is when coding a poisoning or a reaction to the improper use of medication. Assign the appropriate codes for categories T364 to 250. And your T36 to 250 first, followed by the manifestation. And if it, there's a substance abuse or substance dependence, you also need to code that. When you go to your table, you have your poisoning there, improper use of drug. Uh, the other reason why there's a poisoning is improper use of drug or if there's an error. You may also add that in the box because there's still a space there. You may add error, overdose, taken with non-prescribed drug, drug with alcohol, or if the okay, or drug with alcohol. Those are the other reason why the patient may suffer a poisoning. Okay, if the intent is unknown or unspecified, the poisoning should always be coded as accidental because I think there's no one who wants to be poisoned. Okay. Undetermined intent should always be documented and specified that the intent cannot be determined. Okay. Um, next one, you have your, uh, see, before moving on to your underdosing. Okay. A patient was prescribed penicillin by her physician for an infection. The patient decided it, instead of taking the drug as prescribed 500 milligram twice per day, so she would took 1,000 milligram twice per day, so she would work faster and she would feel better sooner. But the patient became very ill after taking 2,000 milligrams the first day, which resulted in projectile vomiting. So for this one, there's an overdosage. So this is considered as your poisoning. So code first for the poisoning, followed by the manifestation, which is your projectile vomiting, which is a totally opposite of your adverse effect a while ago. Okay? Next, underdosing. Obviously, from the definition itself, uh, underdosing refers to taking less of a medication than is prescribed by a physician or manufacturer's instructions. As per your table, taking less of a medication than is prescribed by manufacturer's instructions. So your first code should be condition caused by the underdosing. Yeah, what's the conditions being treated now? That's why why the patients undergo underdosing because of certain condition followed by the underdosing. Code. They have the same sequencing with your adverse effect. While the toxic effects, they have the same sequencing with your poisoning. But what's the difference between poisoning and toxic effects? Toxic effects is when a harmful substance is ingested or comes in contact with a person, like for example, your mercury or any nuclear uh, chemicals. Okay? Then the toxic effects uh, are in the categories T51.2 to T65. Includes intent already, so no need for the code for the external causes for intent. So the sequencing well, uh, is toxic effect code first, followed by the associated intent or the manifestation. Okay? Um, Alright, so that's your... Okay. That is your, um, okay, that is your uh, adverse effect, poisoning, underdosing, and toxic effects, okay? Next, we go through the adult, child of neglect, and other maltreatment, okay? So, uh, sequence first the appropriate code for T74. When I say T74, this is for um, confirmed abuse. T76 is suspected abuse. Neglect automatically followed by accompanying mental health or injury. Okay, you may code T74, T76, or T76 and mental health or injury. If the documentation in the medical records states abuse or neglect, is it is coded as confirmed, you need to add T74 and they should not be coded with T76 because T76 is for suspected abuse. When we say it's confirmed abuse, again, I mentioned this one in your chapter 15, we can say that the patient's already an abuse, confirmed abuse if we can already say who is the perpetrator or who abused the patient, okay? Uh, confirmed abuse or neglect, your code should be T74X92 to Y08 and then Y07. For suspected cases, do not report external cost for perpetra perpetrator because it's still suspected. You need to make sure that it's already confirmed before you are going to code for that perpetrator. 
okay for suspected that is ruled out when we say ruled out that's not true found out that it's not true you need to code z04.71 and z04.72 and you no longer code t76 because t76 is for, for suspected abuse okay we also have a code for suspected case of alleged rape or sexual abuse ruled out meaning it's not true that the uh the alleged okay rape is not true so we will going to use z04.41 or z04.42 and not your t76 okay uh documentation of complication of care this is your uh okay next guideline complication of care is always based on the provider's documentations and the relationship between the condition and procedure okay you should always be careful with that that your complication should always be associated to the uh, care and it should always be specified by the doctor in the documentation okay next one is transplant complications other than kidney okay so obviously there's a separate code for kidney because there's a common transplant that we have but any other uh, transplant other than kidney use your t86 followed by your complication that is being happened t86 guys is a complication code so and I, uh, and, uh, as i mentioned poisoning and complication code should always be coded first in all in general in all chapters okay complication first followed by your what is the actual complication okay t86 and then complication or manifestation uh, for kidney transplant, there's a complication of kidney transplant. And the common kidney transplant complications is you know that your rejection, okay? So you should code T86.1 and you need to specify what is the comp actual complication, okay? That's for your kidney transplant status, okay? Complication code that include the external codes, no need for the external codes, codes because it's also stated that it's due to your transplant. Complication of care codes within the body system chapters. Okay, so we have a code for complication. Now, when you go to your complication code in your alphabetic index, uh, when you go to word complication and you are talking about a, a complication in a specific body, you need to uh, go to the index to your complication and then your subterm should be your specific body system, which is like, for example, genitourinary system. And from there, you can go and check for the specific complications that's how um this is what the guideline is yeah when you go to your alphabetic index when you go to your word complication go to your complication and then your subterm should be the system if it's genitourinary system your next subterm should be your genitourinary system or cardiovascular system and from there you need to check for the specific complication for that system okay this is your guideline all right so well done with chapter 19 and our next module i'll be discussing chapter 20 which is your external cause of morbidity from your category v00 to your y99